<laughs> We're here on uh, case number six seven six three six three. State of Ohio versus Leander Bissell. Defendant is in court with counsel. Tim Hoover and Daryl Denny, President from the State, Carl Mazzone, Maggie Graham, Diane Nasser. Uh, this matter was uh, bench tried to the court. Uh, testimony was concluded on Tuesday, uh, early afternoon. I then took a recess. I have uh, reviewed my notes and reviewed the uh, various videotapes, which were which is the principal evidence in this case. Uh, when I was first assigned this case, my initial reaction was that perhaps it was overindicted and it was a stretch for the state of Ohio. However, this original impression was wrong. After a clear presentation of the facts, this turned out to be the right indictment. The facts were straightforward as documented by the various videos taken at the scene. A motor vehicle accident occurred at the border of Cleveland and Bratnell. A car was rolled over in the high speed lane and in the left perm area. Another vehicle was at rest in the right perm area. Immediately, uh, two zone cars from uh, Cleveland Police Department, two zone cars from Bratnall re uh, <clears throat> responded to the scene. They set up a transitional zone with their vehicles angled across the high speed lane, we'll call number one in the lane immediately to its right, lane number two. This was to prevent any traffic from traveling along that those lanes. Uh, eventually, uh, traffic was diverted to lanes three and four, and no traffic was traveling in lanes one and two. And the only uh, people present in these first two lanes were the first responders to the scene. Engine 22 arrived shortly thereafter. They parked just east of the accident scene Firefighter Tedrick, as was his responsibility and duty, went to the uh, right berm area to check on there was a passenger and a driver who had been involved in the motor vehicle accident. He checked on their well-being and determined that they were in uh, good shape. They had no uh, injuries and responded that they did not need any medical attention. After uh, completing his uh, evaluation of the occupants on the right perm area, Firefighter Tetro proceeded to go back to lanes one and two where the accident had occurred. Um, and as he was doing so, he was entirely in lane number two when the defendant traveling at a high rate of speed uh, struck him and caused his death. The video, uh, various videos clearly show that this is the only vehicle that was traveling in lanes one or two. The videos also show that the defendant skirted around those police vehicles, blocking the lanes of travel. He would go into lane three, then cut back into lane two, so he could proceed unimpeded, despite the fact that knowing that there was first responders in that area and the investigation as to the motor vehicle accident was not completed. Additionally, the traffic in lanes three and four at times were at a standstill or traveling at a very slow rate of speed with officers directing traffic with their flashlights. Much was made about uh, the element of knowledge in this case that the defendant did not knowingly cause 
the death of Johnny Tetrick. Under Ohio law, a person acts knowingly regardless of his purpose when he is aware that his conduct will probably cause a certain result or will probably be of a certain nature. It is not necessary that the accused be in a position to foresee the precise consequence of his conduct. Only that his consequence be foreseeable in the sense that what actually transpired was the natural and logical and that it was within the scope of the risk created by his conduct. This is exactly what happened in this case. Traffic should not have been in lane one and two. First uh, responders were there providing uh, accident investigation, cleanup, and medical assistance. There was no reason for the defendant to be traveling in that lane of travel. And in fact, at one point, the defendant, not only did he skirt around the vehicles by going from lane two to three, at one point, he skirted around one of the uh, police vehicles on the left side between the high-speed lane, lane number one, and the berm. So this shows that he was well aware of what the situation was at the time of the accident. For those reasons, I'm going to find the defendant guilty of all counts in the indictment. However, there will be uh, a discussion at the time or just at the time of sentencing with respect to which counts merge with other counts. That being said, uh, counsel is uh, instructed to file sentencing memorandums, and the court will uh, review those accordingly. In the interim, however, the court finds that the defendant is guilty of count one, felony murder, with a forfeiture specification, counts two and three, felonious assault, count four, involuntary manslaughter, count five, failure to comply, count six, aggravated vehicular homicide, and count seven, failure to stop after an accident. This matter will be set for sentencing on, I believe it was August 18th at 1 o'clock. August 9th. August 9th, excuse me, thank you. Um, anything further at this point, counsel? Nothing on behalf of the state of Ohio. On behalf of the defense? Nothing, Your Honor. Very good. The defendant is remanded without bond.